Hello once again everyone. So moving on with our exercise series today. This one's going to be also kind of a deep dive, so it's this will be a bit of a precursor for a getting more out of uh, Rowward when I eventually get to that. But for now at least, I want to take the time to talk about, uh, specifically with the uh, broadsword, but also in regards to Saber, the idea of cutting to return to your outside guard, why we have this emphasis on the outside guard, and how you should be using it. So firstly, what's the inside and outside guard? Essentially, when I hold my sword straight up, outside line, inside line. If I was left-handed, inside line, outside line. The reason this matters is because, for the most part, at least in regards to uh, British swordsmanship, you're going to find an emphasis on holding an outside guard of various different kinds, depending upon what you're doing, as your default stance. Even things like Italian Saber also have that same idea of emphasizing that outside guard is your starting place. Now, why? Why are we putting all that emphasis on that? Would it be more natural for me to stand this way? Well, the reason being, and you'll notice this across most swordsmanship, is the starting place is usually loading your dominant side in one way, shape, or form. In regards to passing step footwork, then generally you'll have your hand back in some way, some sort of guard. That way you can pass with the attack. In regards to linear fighting, then now the hand merely needs to be on the side of the lead foot, in particular on the outside line, and you are set up to do all your dominant things. Even in something as linear as rapier, you could argue that it's, as, you know, if not loaded on the outside, inclined to go from right to left, meaning it is your strongest side. Now, the reason in particular that with cutting weapons, you want to get good at guarding your outside and return to your outside is because of the difference in regards to your movement. And I talked about this when I talked about feints. Essentially, your safety, where, where you are in danger, where you're not, this is where all your squishy bits are, but the majority of hits that you will encounter will happen on the outside of your body. The reason for this is contraction and extension. This is what your body knows is weak and wants to defend. You put a sword in anyone's hand and cut at them like this, one, don't do that, you're mean, but two, they will make this motion, curling up into the fetal position essentially, as their default motion. Going from outside to inside as a defense is very, very easy to do and doesn't necessarily require a ton of training to mitigate. What you'll mostly find in the beginning is that people will go too far, letting this arm hinge, thus opening the outside line in the middle of the body as opposed to where it should be. However, I digress. Going instead from inside to outside, that's a lot harder to get people to do because it's extension rather than contraction. And again, that's where most people are going to get hit is they will cut from their dominant side, get stuck dominant side forward, and then receive a wound on the outside of their body. Or alternatively, you'll cut at them, they'll contract, they'll stay here, and they'll get hit. Which is why early on, regardless of weapon, you'll notice a lot of people trying to carry with their back edge, their false edge, on their dominant side. Now, with practice, that does work very, very well, but initially, you'll get a lot of people hit. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get back to the exercise. Essentially, we're gonna just go through all seven cuts, but we're going to go with them so that we are returning to the most optimal guard as much as we can, and I'm gonna talk through that emphasis. So, what are the seven cuts? They work like so. So starting with my good outside guard, which for this, make sure your wrist is rolled to the side, okay? You'll see a couple different versions of outside guard. You'll see it more here. You'll see it a little bit more linear. For right now, we'll go with a bit more linear so my basket is a bit more ahead of me, right? I turn that wrist, that way I'm protecting myself. Meanwhile, when I'm on the inside guard, I have just sort of a handshake posture. But either way, my first action is I'm going to perform a one cut which means I come down from my right side. I imagine that my opponent is standing matched with me, and if you wish to go along with this exercise, you can use me as a reference, but I disengage my tip around, and I make sure it is lined up, essentially I'm moving to the medium guard. I push my tip forward, and I lunge, so that way I'm striking as my tip lands. I then mulane back to the outside guard as I recover. Here's that from the side. Disengage the tip, push tip lunge, mulane back. Even if I do this fluidly, in which case it's relatively smooth, or even smoother, there should be a difference between my cut and my moulinet. I'm hitting in extension. If I were hitting nothing, or if I went through my target, then I add the moulinet. It is something that is resting and ready to go, muscle memory, not something that is part of my cut, because that's unnecessary. I'm looking for hit. If I hit nothing, then the momentum will then just be chambered. This is something that's relatively difficult to describe to people, but you're just building habit, essentially. As opposed to every cut I do, 
is always going down into mullen A lamb unless it meets resistance. That's just not necessary. And in general, it'll leave you more open. So that's our one cut. Outside guard, tip comes over, push tip lunge, return to outside guard with what I refer to as an inside mullen A. Now, for our two cut, as per Rauer's advice, we're gonna do something a little bit strange. I am not going to first move to the inside guard and then begin my cut. I'm gonna start in the outside guard and I'm gonna to return to the inside guard. Sorry, I'm gonna to return to the outside guard afterwards. We are going to move through the inside guard. So what I like to do with this is to imagine I'm doing a parry. So my initial attack, where we're outside on outside, I can just hit you right away. Now, that cut is coming in toward us. Move the basket, move the tip, lunge with your hit, Moline with an outside Moline back to the outside guard. The reason that this matters is you could absolutely still do an inside Moline and return to the inside guard, but we want to hit our opponent and then stay on this side of their swords that we're locking them out away from us. Essentially what's occurring is when they throw that first cut in and we parry, we're threatening them with our ability to fire that strong dominant shot that we know we can do. They return with the true cross to make our tip not able to touch them, so we disengage around, we hit them on the outside of their body, and then from here, again, we moline to ensure that they can't come back toward us because we're on this side of their sword. Were you to hit someone on the inside of their sword, so I parry, I get a little wider parry, and I cut immediately, then yes, I want to return my blade so that it's between me and them, but since we're on the outside, return to the outside guard. This is the longer but safer option and is kind of linking into what we're talking about today. So. So far, our exercise is like so. Tip, tip, Moline to outside. Basket, tip, Moline to outside. Now, next, we're going to go into our three cut. The three cut's going to work in the same way. I'm going to move my basket to the inside guard, so I'm nice and safe. Tip, tip, squeeze cut, and then return back down that line to the outside guard. Essentially, what you can think about is your tip goes up, and then as soon as its momentum is dying, the basket falls into that hole. So here's that again. And then the outside guard, tip over, sorry, basket over, tip basket. And I don't put my foot in until I'm actually going out. You'll see this a lot with three cuts where people will step then cut. This makes it very easy for me to crumple that shape, especially if I can get my basket in there. Make sure that you're taking that time to only step once it's actually going out. That will allow your fingers lead over to your tip moving. Your tip is then supported by your shoulder and then moving back in the inside, sorry, outside guard is very, very easy. So next we go into our number four cut, which because we went inside, outside, we can launch immediately. So I just bring my tip down, squeeze and open the shoulder, back down the inside guard. Kind of the exact same idea, just now in reverse. This one, again, only step when the actual cut is coming out. So let's go over our action so far. We're in outside guard, disengage, hit with the one cut, Moline, sway the basket, disengage, hit with the two cut, Moline, sway the basket, let the tip go back, three cut, stay in the outside guard, four cut, and now we're back to the inside. So you notice there's this idea essentially of if we're going to cut from our offside, defend that inside first, disengage the tip around their target, then hit them with the safest option as opposed to just one for one inside outside. You will absolutely still do one for one inside outside, but in general, if other people are following the same idea of, hey, the place where I'm weakest is the outside of my arm, and I want to defend that by default as much as possible, this is how most of your openings are going to end up. It's easy to defend the inside of your body. So only defend it enough to threaten the inside of their body, get them to close that out, then hit the outside of their body. Now. Let's now move into the five and six. The five and six are going to, again, involve that basket sway. So we just finished, boom, we're in the inside guard, okay? I'm going to move my basket to outside, let the tip disengage, five, and I return back to outside. Move to inside, let the tip disengage, six, return to inside. This one, because we're going pure horizontal, it's just that sway cut. What you really want to make sure you do with these two is you don't want to be cutting from the sway. So what I mean by that is my basket moves over, my tip moves over, then I cut back across with the shoulder and the fingers extending. As opposed to my basket moves over, my tip goes farther and takes my basket with it, and thus making this hole. 
There's a lot of counter shots in backswords, specifically around the idea of your opponent starts swaying their basket because they start letting that disengage be part of their cut as opposed to just lining up the cut. All these are working on the exact same pretense of basket in middle, one side or the other, tip goes around to the point it's lined up with whatever line you want to cut on, then it goes across. So let's go through the whole exercise we have and then we'll, uh, we'll add the seven cut. So outside guard, disengage the tip, hit, Molinate to outside guard. Sway to inside, move the tip, hit, disengage to outside guard. Move to inside, disengage, all the way down, cut to outside guard. From the outside guard, tip down, cut to inside guard. Sway the basket, aim the tip, cut across to outside. Move the basket, sway the tip, cut to, out, to uh, inside. You come back across that one. Now, four, and to be fair on that one, you could also stay on the outside guard. It's, it's whatever. But next, we move into the seven. Now for the seven, I'm very particular about it, you can actually launch a pretty decent seven from your inside guard. All you need to do is just turn your wrist over and you're able to launch a pretty quick seven, which is generally why you'll see that idea of inside half hanger seven cut. Very, very good. It appears in pretty much every sword system. But to add a little bit of extra security, we are instead going to first move into the hanging guard and return to the hanging guard. So I will, after I finish, I'm in the inside guard, up to hanging guard, let the tip come back to me, turn over, cut, then return back to hanging guard. Now the way you achieve this is you want to let the tip have a little bit of play and then it's all about cutting outward, not downward. For those of you that watched the long sword video, this is a two cut, even though it's our scariest one, not a through cut. Cutting anywhere beyond this with a seven is just unnecessary. It doesn't really get us anything more than what we hit. When you're cutting diagonally, then it gets you more, right? The idea being that I'm threatening the whole line and could apply that one take over. But in regards to straight up, straight down, once I've thumped at about shoulder level, if I've hit anything, I'm good, right? So again, you're up in the hanging guard, let the tip come back, out. Then when you return, basket turns up first, body comes back. This ensures that your tip will stay right where you were, which means that you won't create any unnecessary openings. If you let that tip sway, you'll get stuck in one or the other versions of the prime parry, which while the prime parry can defend everything, we'd like to be in its most neutral position first before we do one of those dedicated defenses. So with that in mind, let's go over the full exercise together. I'll do it first facing the camera, and then I'll do it facing away from the camera. And with this, I'm just doing my normal lunge. So outside guard, Disengage, one cut, molinate outside. Basket, disengage, two cut, molinate to outside. Basket, disengage, three cut, back to outside. Disengage, four cut, back to inside. Basket, tip, five cut, outside. Basket, tip, six cut, inside. Hanging guard, seven. Hanging guard, outside guard. Done. Now the reason that I'm moving from that hanging guard back to the outside guard is in general, out of the two guards you could move to, so being up uh, in the hanging guard, you could go to either inside or outside equally. It's just fine that way. But in general, I recommend you keep a hold of that outside line because if we look at my vulnerability, and this again gets into the whole thing I'm trying to explain here, if you're gonna hit me anywhere, it's gonna be around my basket. So let's keep that covered. If someone tries to get wise, I still have my tip that can come across in any sorts of way and really lock this side down again. Your left side, as a right-hander, is super easy to defend. It's around your basket you gotta be worried about. So, now I will do that exercise facing this way, and then we'll be done. So, outside guard, disengage the tip, one cut, molinate to outside. Basket, tip, two cut, molinate to outside. Basket, tip, three cut, back to outside. Tip, four cut, back to inside. Basket, tip, six, sorry, five cut, back to outside, basket, tip, five, six cut, back to inside, so I got myself backwards, hanging guard, seven, hanging guard, outside guard, done. And that's about the speed you want to be doing it. If you want to practice speed, then in that case, just do your stagnant, you know, all the way through all six cuts as Ralworth has you do it in the very beginning. But for really focusing on making those good returns every time you throw an action that puts things in your favor, I recommend you follow about that order. Always only line up the basket as much as you need to, just to line up the tip to its angle, 
make your shot, and then return to where you started from pretty much, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. There are some exceptions, of course, if you're on the inside or outside the blade, but that will all be made clear when I do uh, further stuff. And generally, you should know that anyway. If you're on the inside of the blade, you can hit someone, cover that line again. If you're on the outside of the blade, cut around, hit, cover the line that their sword is on. Either way, though, thank you very, very much for watching. And we will go over some other techniques another time.